but we it was uh, wasn't as it difficult wasn't. as it may may appear. No, it's a no. big culture shift, but and you like it. You like it here, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, for the for the for the same reason that Andre just mentioned, I've got my mom living here, and my brother and his four kids mm. moved as well to Las Vegas, and so with his family is still here, and mine kind of coming here, and a lot of friends that uh, we've uh, we have, you know, it's it's all about that really, to be honest, you know, if, if you've got your family and friends around you, you know, where else do you need to be? Yeah. So the school was started, when, when did you uh, make the first? Yeah, I started the school in uh, 2001, and we built the school in the most poorest neighborhood of Las Vegas, so that we could affect the children that we wanted, that needed it the most. Freetyping.net. So when did you first get the idea that you had to put something back, and especially well, in your I always, area? I always knew I wanted to do that, um, as even as a teenager, you know, but the question was how, who, and when, right? So let's do it. Ready? Draw it. Yes, write it. So you check look at it, say it, check it. Cover it, write it, then check it. Through a process of doing a lot of things with children, clothing them, you know, shelters for them, um, you know, Boys and Girls Club after hours programs, school hours. You know, I found myself going, we're just sticking band aids on real issues. Mm -hmm. We got to systemically okay, make a change. And the only way to do that yeah, is to yeah, educate. To what is this word? Look. Yes, look. look. So, my goal and my hope was to create an environment where I could give resources, I could be accountable with those resources, and then I could give that opportunity to children that society's written off the most. And as a result, we have our first graduating class, you know, June 12th, and all our kids are going to. Go How on. Exciting for you. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to be here for that? Uh, of course, I'm going to be here for that. My focus is to put the people in charge here that know how to educate, that know how to care, that know how to, you know, and that's, that's ever-evolving. You know? Your aggression that you had on court, so serene off court, but your aggressive play on court, where does she channel that aggression now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I would have to probably say just in straight organizational skills. I mean, to negotiate <laughs> like our schedules and the time that we have. Like, our daughter would go to school in the afternoon for three hours because she's in pre-kindergarten, yeah, and Jaden goes in the morning. So those morning hours are all accounted for with jazz and. The afternoon hours are accounted for with Jane. I mean, just the organization of it, it runs like a, <laughs> a well-oiled machine. Really? Yeah. Do you recognize that in yourself? Yeah? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I've always been more structured that's and organized. German, isn't it? German it's that's what they, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good for you, because is Andre prone to not following timetables if one lets him then? No, 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 no. He's I good mean, at sticking no. to the program? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. For I, time, you know, we're very like similar yeah. in that sense. We'll always be a few minutes late rather, uh, early rather than late. You know, there's, no, we're, we're, we're good with that. I, I just need a few more inspirations in my life to get that extra motivation, you know? <laughs> so I, I look for a bit more on the... And, and what about tidiness? Is she really, really tidy? Oh, yes. Well? Really clean yes. and... Yes. Yeah. And is he okay? Borderline. <laughs> Here he is at age six, stroking shots with a skill that many adults never achieve. He was at a kid's tennis clinic in Las Vegas with his dad when he caught the eye of tennis commentators Vic Braden and Don Drysdale. You want to be a tennis player when you, when you grow up? Yes. And would you like to play on the WCT tour maybe with Jimmy Connors and Ely Nastasi and Harold Solomon and Rod Laver and all those guys? Yes. Steffi and Andre were no strangers to the cameras. From an early age, it was clear they were something special. Hours and hours were spent on the court, and as in the case of most tennis prodigies, both sets of parents were heavily involved in honing their skills. Now they're a mum and a dad. So with all that experience, how much will they push their two children? I know it's a question you've been asked a zillion times, but if either of your kids showed talent in tennis, would that be the thing that kind of held you back from encouraging them, knowing the life of sacrifice? That wouldn't be what holds 
me back. Yeah. I mean, for me, Talk it's, it's about not it. about sacrifice. I mean, because there's, there's, there's a lot of good in that. There's a lot of good in asking yourself to do things that you question you're capable of or not, you know. But the part that's tough is, you know, we know that life and that world so intimately. And I think one of the joys, and we've talked about this quite often, like one of the joys about children is taking the simple things in life and being able to see it through a child's eyes, you know, mm. being able to enjoy the process, whether it's, you know, going to a park or to a beach and to see their excitement for this and their excitement right. for that. But when you're so aware of what the next sort of obstacle is going to be, I, I just think it would compromise our ability to enjoy the ride with them as much. And it's a selfish decision, but as I, much I as wouldn't. your families were able to, because they didn't yeah. know how it was going to unfold. Exactly. So they're just going along for the ride, but we wouldn't be going along for the ride. We'd be scared to death of what they're in yeah. for. And as a result, I think it's a selfish, it would be a selfish choice to not sort let of, mm. I wouldn't say we wouldn't let them if there was a desire that they had to actually do it. Um, but there's, you know, it's about nurturing or not no nurturing. <laughs> hey, you're a baseball mum. <laughs> uh, baseball parents, yes. Yeah. So we've, uh, yeah, our oldest has taken up that sport With and talent. loving it. Yeah. Hand eye coordination has come true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a long ago. He, he loves it, which is awesome. And then I love it, and it's a great way to spend time together. Are they showing talent with the racket? Or, um, are uh, we... Would you say Jazz does? She plays, she plays three, a four times bit. a week, she... and she has fun doing it. And, uh, but I don't She concentrates hard. Yeah. I know she does. I she said she looks like you, but she behaves more like yeah, Mum. Yeah, she has real focus and and uh, concentration and... But Jaden's a bit more... Uh, yeah, Jaden is paying me back everything that I energy. did to my parents. <laughs> 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 he's paying me back, but he's a lot of energy and he gets easily distracted. There's a lot of sort of innate talent with what he, he does when he gets on the baseball field. He's not ready to focus yet. He's yeah, just, he's just, no. the focus is a bit, a bit tougher. <laughs> Time. Wimbledon's a special place for Steffi. Graph on grass was awesome. She lifted the famous rosewater dish seven times. Her first win came in 88. The dream has been fulfilled. Her last in 96. She's the third most successful woman in Wimbledon singles history. Andre took his time falling in love with SW19. For a number of years, he declined to play as he found the emphasis on tradition overwhelming. But when he came back, Wimbledon was the scene of his first Grand Slam triumph in 1992. From then on, as far as his fans were concerned, the green, green grass was his home. And on Sunday, both he and his wife will be back on Wimbledon Centre Court, playing together as the new roof is unveiled. What's it going to be like going back and playing on Centre Court, Eva? It's magical for me. I mean, that was the site of my first, uh, my first win. And the one I least expected, and I think most likely the one people expect at least for me. Um, and then just the whole idea of just being able to play on center court, you know. I mean, separate from the championships was, uh, I mean, any time Wimbledon breaks a tradition, you got to just, <laughs> you got to They didn't have to ask that. you twice to do this no, one. No, no, it was an easy, easy answer when we got asked. I mean, yeah. it's great memories for us, and it's just such a special place. Yeah. And... Uh, being the first one to play with the with the brew, oh, I think there was a big big smile on my face for yeah. sure. Just just uh, just getting there and and uh, yeah, being being able to walk on that court again. I mean, I would have thought that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's going to hit me pretty surreal, really. I mean, you know, because in so many ways I don't even feel like a tennis player, you know, anymore. It's like it's it feels like a Long lifetime gone. ago. But you walk out there and and you'll be able to identify with it in a, through a whole different lens. You, you won't be focused on really a ball or an opponent, you sort of be allowing yourself really for the first time in my life to just actually take it in. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that I'm looking forward to because you know, that's, that's the real good stuff. So you've got a plaster on your wrist. You've also <laughs> got, a, there's a few well knocks and strains. This, this body's not used to this kind of training. Yeah, I've put myself through a few rounds of, uh, of uh, tennis that you know, ended up with a couple cortisone injections in my wrist and you know, Couple so, aching backs in the morning, and the floor seems to get further and further away when I, when I try to put on my shoes. But, you know, <laughs> but um, just I'm trying to work myself into it, and so that I'm not, uh, so I'm not horrible. Does that mean that you don't play much with each other then, or does that mean that you don't play at this intensity very much? Um, we play randomly with each other when the time works, and yeah, but um, we're every, talking about once a month. 
the most. Down to most. Really? The yeah. most. Yeah. So but for us. That's just shattered one of my yeah, but then, but then, yeah, but then when you. I wanted you out there every night yeah. for an hour, you know. <laughs> Darling Martini, let's that have a round of That would have made it easier for next week, that's for sure. Yeah. But then when you get out there and you actually start to push yourself, like, because you're going to end up playing a couple sets or you're going to end up, you know, then you.